In an alternate 1982, a huge alien spaceship arrives on Earth and hovers above South Africa. For three months there's no activity from the ship, so the authorities finally decide to cut their way inside, only to discover a group of aliens in a malnourished condition because they ran out of supplies a long time ago. These aliens get derogatorily named prawns by humans. Rumors say a shuttle descended from the mothership, but nobody is able to find it. After receiving lots of international pressure, the South African government moves 1.8 million prawns to a refugee camp known as District 9. Scholars believe these prawns are the workers of their species, and therefore they need higher leaders to command them and rarely take initiative. Although it's surrounded by soldiers and fences, the first few months in the district are peaceful, and it's discovered aliens love cat food. But as time passes, humans begin rioting because the government is using too many resources on aliens instead of taking care of their people, and District 9 becomes a slum, further gaining people's xenophobia. The fact the aliens see certain violent activities, like setting fire to vehicles, as mere entertainment doesn't help their case at all. Eventually the area becomes overcrowded and a prime land for all kinds of crime. Warlord Obisanjo opens a massive black market in District 9, which includes lady workers and arms trafficking. The aliens' technology is quite advanced, however human hands aren't capable of handling their weapons. 28 years later, the tension between aliens and locals make the government relent to public pressure, and they decide to move the camp away from the city to a remote location. To do so they hire a weapons manufacturer called MNU, Multinational United, whose executive Mr. Smith appoints his employee and son-in-law Wickes to lead the relocation. A group of mercenaries will also come along for the sake of Wickes' safety and to push along any aliens that resists, Wickes' assistant and a cameraman also come along to record it all. While they get ready, Wickes isn't happy to see how many weapons the mercenaries have brought, but Colonel Venter insults him and tells him to deal with it. A whole convoy of vehicles carry the team to the district to be able to cross through e protests, and when a few prawns try to attack them, the mercenaries defend themselves with killing shots. Wickes goes from door to door asking the prawns to sign the forms that informs them of the eviction, sometimes using cat food as bargain. While some aliens accept to cooperate, others don't want to be taken from their homes and try to fight, which causes the mercenaries to take them out by force despite Wickes' protests. In one of the houses they find prawn eggs filling the room from wall to wall, and after showing them to the camera, Wickes orders a mercenary to burn them. The shacks also contain lots of hidden alien technology that the mercenaries confiscate for the MNU to continue testing even if they haven't figured it out yet. Meanwhile, Christopher, his son CJ, and his friend Paul are seeking a special alien fluid from destroyed prawn technology that piles up with the trash. CJ finally finds a piece after two decades, and the group excitedly takes it to their home, where they take the fluid to a hidden room filled with advanced tech. The fluid is synthesized and put inside a silver cylinder to carry on their plan, but at that moment, Wickes and his team knock on the door. Christopher and CJ rush to their own house, and after hiding the cylinder, Paul goes out to deal with the humans. However since Paul doesn't want to cooperate, the mercenaries quickly push him to the ground and hold him at gunpoint. Wickes enters the house to investigate and finds lost of weapons plus the cylinder, which he accidentally activates and causes it to spray his face. After confiscating the cylinder, Wickes tries to ask Paul some questions, but Paul responds by hurling the mercenary into his house and pushing Wickes onto a barrel of fire. Venter arrives with more men and immediately kill Paul while Wickes discovers he's burned his arm. After receiving medical attention, Wickes continues with his duty, and eventually makes it to Christopher's house. He tries to give some candy to CJ, but CJ responds by throwing it at him. This reaction angers the humans, who decide to push Christopher to his knees and inspect the house, where they discover all sorts of equipment. While looking around, Wickes suddenly throws up a lot of weird liquid and begins feeling dizzy. The team decides to take him away for now, but when they stop to grab a bite, Wickes' nose begins bleeding. More symptoms keep appearing when Wickes returns to the office to do his reports, he won't stop coughing, and his nails are coming out of his fingers. Back in the district, Christopher and CJ look for the cylinder and get sad when they find it gone. Meanwhile a group of prawns trades their battle suit for a bunch of cat food at the warlord's base, however one of the men kills a prawn to use him as food. Obisanjo has been hiring witches and shamans because he wants to become a prawn to be able to use their weapons, and these witches think that can be achieved if he consumes prawn flesh. However so far it hasn't worked. Sometime later, Wickes returns home to discover his wife Tanya is throwing him a surprise party to celebrate his promotion. Wickes tries to be social and friendly, but he isn't feeling well at all. He ends up in the bathroom throwing up in the sink, and when they cut the cake, he throws up again before passing out. The next morning, Wickes wakes up in the hospital. The doctor removes the bandages from his burned arm, only to discover Wicca's hand has become a prawn claw. Terrified, the doctor calls the MNU, and a bunch of soldiers quickly arrive to take Wicca's body away in a bag while ignoring Tanya's pleas for an explanation. Later at a lab, the staff finds the cylinder in Wicca's pocket and they take it away. From then on, the MNU puts Wicca's through a series of brutal experiments, including trying out alien technology. To Wicca's surprise, his new hand has enough prawn DNA to use the alien weapons. Wickes suffers as they make him shoot various targets and at the end, 
he also has to shoot a prawn to death, which mentally destroys him. Once the tests are over, the scientists and the executives, including Smith himself, agree to kill Wickus in order to harvest his organs and blood before he finishes transforming into a prawn. With DNA composed of the perfect prawn and human balance, they could create great soldiers capable of using the alien weapons. When he hears this, Wickus freaks out and attacks everyone around him, using a scalpel to get a hostage so he's able to escape the lab before he's shot. The mercenaries are ordered to go after him, and Smith meets with Tanya to give her a twisted version of what's going on. On the streets, Wickus steals clothes from hangers, a phone from a kid, and scavenges trash cans for food while always trying to keep his claw hidden. He tries to call his friends and family to ask for help, but everyone ignores him, and soon he learns why, when he enters a store, he sees a new broadcast announcing he's wanted fugitive that developed a transmissible disease from doing the dirty with the prawns. Everyone in the shop runs away from him, and Wickus accepts he has no choice but to go to District 9. Here he scavenges as well and even manages to obtain a can of cat food, which he eats eagerly until he realizes he's losing his teeth as well. At that moment, Wickus receives a call from Tanya, who informs him she doesn't want anything to do with him anymore because he disgusts her. Tanya ends the call without hearing his explanation, and Wicku is so desperate to get her back that he gets an axe to try to get rid of the claw. However he's so nervous that he only gets one finger, and the pain is too much to continue. Suddenly, mercenaries' helicopters begin looking for him in the area. Wickus rushes to hide inside a house and bumps into Christopher, discovering his secret room right before passing out from blood loss from his wound. When he wakes up later, he finds himself inside the rumored shuttle hidden under Christopher's house. When Wickus explains he doesn't have the cylinder anymore, Christopher and CJ explain they need the fluid to operate the mothership again, and it could also power a machine that can help Wickus reverse his transformation. Retrieving the cylinder would be impossible because the mercenaries would kill them on the spot. Wickus spends the following hours suffering the pain of his body transforming as his skin sheds and his torso mutates. Suddenly Wickus gets another call from Tanya, and this time she promises to take him back and to be more understanding. However this is a trap by the MNU, who made Tanya call with lies to track Wickus' location. Meanwhile CJ tells Christopher how much he misses his home planet, but Christopher reminds him they can't go anywhere without the fluid, so they should go to the new settlement. Wickus overhears this and feels bad for them so he explains the new territory is even worse than this one, going there is just a bad idea. Desperate to help the prawns and go back to his wife in a better state, Wickus announces he has a plan. Afterward Wickus goes to see Obisanjo to try to buy some weapons, but he's received with disdain and violence. When the men push Wickus they notice his transformed body, and Obisanjo sends orders to get his claw for him to eat. Wickus struggles against the men and finds an alien weapon on the ground, which he immediately takes and begins shooting around. Its power is incredible and quickly kills a bunch of men, allowing him to grab a bag of weapons and escape. Meanwhile the mercenaries arrive at Christopher's shack, only to find it empty. It turns out Christopher and Wickus are sneaking into the MNU base by blowing up the entrance, and as soon as they arrive at the lab, they shoot a few men before finding the cylinder. However Christopher also finds many prawns that have been killed in experiments, including Paul. The shock doesn't let him move, and this gives the mercenaries time to catch up with them and open fire. Wickus fires back and kills lots of mercenaries while he reminds Christopher of CJ's future, which helps the prawn snap out of it. Then Christopher uses scraps found around the lab to make a bomb, which is used to create an opening on the wall. Wickus and Christopher rush outside and steal a MNU car to return to District 9 while Venter and his men follow him. Once they make it to the house, CJ begins putting the fluid in the shuttle, and Christopher uses that moment to confess he'll come back in three years to cure Wickus because the current fluid isn't enough to both power the shuttle and the healing machine. Furious, Wickus knocks out Christopher and descends into the shuttle, where CJ is putting the fluid into the shuttle and makes the shuttle work again. A desperate Wickus tries to operate the shuttle while Venter arrives and threatens to kill Christopher. Suddenly the ground starts to shake and Venter and Christopher run out of the house right before the shuttle raises from the ground not very smoothly. Venter orders his men to open fire, and a missile immediately destroys one of the shuttle's engines, so Christopher has to watch how his last hope crashes to the ground. Afterward, Venter's men capture Christopher and Wickus to take them away in their car. However the vehicle is suddenly ambushed by Obisanjo's gang, causing their cars to crash against Venter's. Then the gang opens fire and fiercely fight against the mercenaries until they grab Wickus, taking him away while leaving Christopher behind. Meanwhile CJ deals with the shuttle panel and manages to activate the mothership again. At the gang's base, Wickus is taken to the witches to try to perform the ritual using his claw. However when CJ activates the mothership, this also activates all other alien tech, including the battle suit hidden in the gang's base. The suit scans the area and detects Wickus as a prawn ally but the gang members as human enemies, so it opens fire to kill Obisanjo and his entire gang. Back to the mercenaries, a few of them interrogate Christopher about the revived mothership while the rest of the group goes after Wickus. Finding himself surrounded, Wickus has no choice but to put on the suit and meet them face to face. When he notices the mercenaries captured Christopher, he offers to trade the alien for exchange of his freedom, however he quickly changes his mind when he hears Venner order his men to kill Christopher. 
Furious, Wickes begin killing mercenaries with no mercy in order to save Christopher. Then they rush back to the shuttle, but since more mercenaries are coming after them, Wickes stay behind to buy Christopher time, refusing to come when Christopher invites him to his planet. As thanks, the prawn promises to return in three years to cure him. Wickes keeps on killing mercenaries all over the place, spilling blood everywhere, flipping a car when it comes after him, and even shooting a few missiles. When he's about to shoot Venter too, a car hits him from behind and he falls with the suit malfunctioning. At that moment Christopher contacts the mothership through the shuttle control panel, and makes the mothership extract the shuttle so he and CJ and escape. The mothership emits a tractor beam and picks up the shuttle, Venter sees this and orders for another missile to be fired. Wickes immediately cuts in and uses his suit to grab the missile, which explodes and destroys his left arm. Seeing Christopher and CJ escape and the mothership makes Venter incredibly angry, so he shoots the suit until he destroys it. Wickes crawls out of it, showing his left eye is swollen and yellow, meaning he's about to finish transforming. Venter points his gun at him ready to kill, but suddenly a bunch of prawns show up and kill him first to save Wickes, who is now seen as a prawn too. Sometime later, humans celebrate that the mothership has left Earth. Wickes assistant exposes the MNU's illegal research, and the government safely transfers all the 2.5 million prawns to the new District 10 before demolishing 9. Wickes story become infamous, but most people stop thinking about him after a while, thinking he's dead. However Tanya is sure Wickes is fine because she's found a handcrafted metal flower at her door, and Wickes has always liked crafts. Back in the landfill, it's revealed Wickes is alive and fully a prawn now, and he makes more metal flowers with trash. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.